Thank you very much, and thank you very much for inviting us uh, to, to this, this session. Uh, with our long his history, we would like to, to start and, and to give some, some introduction to how we arrived to where we are today. Yeah, um, if we start in the, in the 19th century or even before that, the, the forest in our country more or less had no, no value. Uh, there were some, some, uh, some people that needed wood for, for f as fuel wood and for, for the households and also for, uh, for, for using the, the forest for, uh, for, for their uh, uh, cattle to, to graze in. But then it was also at the time when the far farmers themselves had difficulties to have full occupation during the whole year. During the summer season, they were fully employed in the, uh, or fully uh, occupied in, in the agri agriculture, but in the winter time, they had difficulties. So at that time, there was a, a, a time when, when the state were able to give, give the farmers state forests to be able to increase their income and also occupation over the full, whole year. And one very, very important thing in this regard is that the property that the farmers were having or were given, it was very much uh, the, the ownership of the, f the farmer itself, both the agriculture as well as the forest. A dramatic shift happens when we enter the industrialization, the early day of industrialization. In Sweden, that was a question of, of sawmill industry was growing. And suddenly, the forest got a very much increased value. And we, the smallholders, were faced with buyers who wanted our forest. And the forest became a little bit like a, a grab-and-run situation. And we were actually in the face of deforestating Sweden. And this uh, created a crisis, of course, and this was creating a political panicking. Yeah, and then from the governmental side, it was a lot of discussions on how would it be possible to to stop this over exploitation of our forest resources. And uh, that resulted finally in our first forest policy in the beginning of the 1900s, where we had um, um, the creation of, of the first, our first forestry act. It was also creation of reg regional forest authorities that would be able to support the small forest holders uh, especially with uh, extension uh, advice, how to, how to manage the forest, and also, that also resulted in, um, in, in, a, in a movement that we, we started to reforestate our, our lands, our degraded lands. And one thing which is very important in this regard is the Swedish Forest Authority does not manage any state forest because that then you could have that was was also um, a, a possibility that we could uh, give advice to forest owners and the, the forest owner trusted the advice they got from us. If we also had been able to um, to manage the state forest, I think it, it would have been some more reluctance from the for, forest owner side to to handle and and take on board those advice we were given. So we had a supportive forest authority. The state was supportive to us. We had the market. The market was perhaps even too eager because they were so eager of, of getting our, our wood. Uh, and and uh, so, so uh, the problem was, however, that we could not handle the market. On the marketplace, the smallholder were very, very vulnerable. We could not negotiate the price. And we were, we were sheeted. We were provided alcohol and other things. So we, we faced that this is not the right way to do it. So locally, in the villages, independently, we started to form some kind of simple association, simple things working together, trying to defend ourselves, at least having a minimum price when these buyers were coming. And, and, and little by little, these uh, associations got stronger and stronger. But the, the really root of the whole thing is, of our producer organizations, is to, to, to protect us when the market buyers are acting in, in an evil way. And from the government side, there was some support to the activities within the forests, mainly on road construction, drainage of, of wetlands, and, and some other activities to help the farmers to be able to uh, 
and um, to increase their production on their forest land. And, and also the state was establishing a cap of the company's purchase of land, which still is in place. The companies in Sweden, the big ones, cannot go beyond the 25% ownership as they have. And the majority of the forest in Sweden is family owned and will, and will remain so. Uh, with it, by the time we uh, merged, this was restructured, these uh, hundreds and hundreds of small associations. And in the 1930s, we were down to 35. And at that stage, we also saw that it's not enough only to deal with the market. We have to deal with the policymakers as well. That's why we, with, at that point, had uh, established our federation of associations. A tiny thing, two people, staying in Stockholm, trying to be a, a voice for us, also for the policy work. And for, for the government's point of view, I think it was uh, a good to merge and also to have the, the national federation because then it would be much easier for, for us from the government side to have somebody to talk to uh, instead of talking to hundreds or, or even more peop, uh, owner, forest owners associations. It had, was um, more easy to discuss with one and then we could was also sure that this kind of information and the dialogue we had was also spread to all the others. And little by little we grew as, as, as associations. We uh, were actually asked by the government during the wartime, you know, in Sweden we don't have any fossil energy and we were in, uh, dependent on importing coal, etc. But because of the Second World War, we were asked to provide the cities with, with firewood. And that was a new and important income for us. So by, with that money, we were also able to enter little by little in the sawmill industry ourselves. And when it comes to the 1970s, uh, there was a movement in, in Sweden that a, a growing interest in the environment and a lot of environmental organizations were created and uh, there was a lot of concerns of how the, the, the owners, both the big ones, the big forest industry as well as the small forest owners to some extent, how they were managing their forest. And uh, we also saw that uh, that that kind of discussion that came up during that time uh, entered into a very, very detailed forest legislation in our country during the 1980s. And we were upset about this. We didn't like that at all, that the state was so detailed in describing what I should do in my land. So we were in strong opposition to this detailed thing, uh, because we also believe in that uh, if, if you have uh, many decisions, uh, among all, all these uh, family owners, you all also will gain a diversity in the forest, which has also uh, had value for the society. And uh, the discussion we have had uh, over the years has kind of created some kind of, of, of trust between the forest owners and also the, the, uh, from, the, from the government side. Uh, and uh, this detailed legislation during that discussion, we realized from the government side that the detailed regulatory legislation was not a, a full way forward because uh, we, we, we understood that the forest owners really, and also the forest industry and, and some others, uh, thought it was too much detailed and too much uh, intervention on, 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 on the ownership of the, the owners. So in 1990s, we had a revision of the forestry legislation and it was influenced from, from the outcomes, from the, uh, the, re, uh, the um, United Nations Conference on the Environment and, and Development in uh, Rio de Janeiro, 1992. And in that, in that regard, it we become a, a better balance between the environmental issues and the wood production issues. Yeah, so, so with this we were, we were quite satisfied, uh, even though in, in the legislation there is a balance goal between environment and production, uh, but with time we, we, uh, we, we believe as well that that, that, that is a sound, sound view, uh, and this, this is the view of also of the, of the family forest owners, that we should take care, because we are making and managing our forest land for our children and our grandchildren. We do not want to do any harm to, to nature or to, to the environment, uh, as we would like to give a, a better forest estate 
to, to our children uh, than, than compared to what, what we our, got ourselves at, at the time. So now we are up to where we are today, and, and what kind of benef bene benefit can we, can we say that we have reached? Well, uh, well I, I would say that today we have a rather good dialogue between the, the, the Swedish Forest Agency and the forest owners, also including other stakeholders. And uh, we have a rather good dialogue, which means that we have both formally discussions, but also informally discussion about the policy that, that we are making. And if, from that point of view, I think we have a better understanding and acceptance of the, the policy we are making and also the implementation that we are carrying out. And we, of course, we enjoy this respect shown by the state. We are not really um, working to stop governmental proposals. We want to improve them. We want them to make realistic. We want them to be sound. And we want to understand why we have to do various kinds of regulations. So, so that is what has followed this, this uh, maturity of our relation, where we have a dual respect, and which I think is, is really, really a win-win situation. And if you look at what we have achieved with, with the four pillars, with the land ownership, with the market access, with the supportive authority, uh, and the strong uh, forest owner uh, producer organization, is that we have doubled the amount of, of wood in the Swedish forest. The forest cover has been restored. Since we started to measure in 1920, we have doubled the amount of forest, and we are still increasing every year at the same time that we have harvested six billion cubic meters to shift Sweden from an emigrating poor country to a welfare state. That's a story to tell, I think. So, and uh, if we, I think we have a, a respect between each other and, and uh, if we should go and talk a little bit about the, the challenges we are facing. Uh, from, from our side, from, uh, from the government side, we see the urbanization going on all over the world. And uh, that urbanization will change the demands and the requirements on forests. And th that is a, a challenge for, for us in our respect. And we're trying then to, to balancing the, the various interests on forests. Uh, which is which, and all, which try to, to balance all the, the, the three pillars of sustainable forest management. I mean, the drivers for family forestry, that we have the property rights and the, the forest const, consists of an asset for the family, which lead to that, that this win-win situation, that, that we have better livelihoods on the Swedish countryside. We have better forest cover, and, and we, we have achieved a sustainable forest management as we are managing the forest for our children and grandchildren. And, and I think that the challenge we are facing today and where we sometimes have, have different opinions is that the state has to balance opinions, many times coming from the big cities where the 85% of the Swedish people are living these days, who have a, have a lot of ideas about my forest. They have lots of ideas how I should manage my forest. And that balance is a tricky thing for them to, to handle because uh, Bjorn is working with his minister and his minister is elected. And most of the uh, people who is voting lives in the big cities. So they have, you know, and by putting too much on head of us of detailed things or things that we should do or not should do, you are, you are touching the driver, the ownership right, the freedom of decision of us. And uh, the worst case, when they told us, you're not allowed to touch those trees on your land then no market anymore. That doesn't consist of any value for us anymore besides looking at them, which, which is nice, but in the end, we also want a good livelihood. And that balance is a trick that we have to consider to, and, uh, to work further with. But I think with the basic, uh, basis of the, of the respect we have achieved, we are, we are, we are happy. Yeah, and for, from our side, I think it's a, it's a challenge also trying to, uh, to increase the understanding of the forest policy implementation and in this respect, we, we, are try, we are now in a, in a dialogue with, with different stakeholders um, to, uh, to understand the, 
the different values in the forest and how we see them. I, we can understand the forest owners have their view of, of the forest, but we'll, we also have to take into consideration the views of, of others that also have access to forest. Uh, so, uh, so that's a very tricky thing. And what we have done now in the, in the dialogue is trying to communicate together and see how do you look upon a forest and how do you look upon a forest to have different views and do, do this, this in, 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 in a group so we have a better understanding of the different viewpoints.